Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? So I am here checking out the electric Eco Delta. It's a very unique electric trike that honestly, I really like it a lot because of its quirkiness, because it's uh, kind of different. It has kind of a traditional set of handlebars on it, but nonetheless, it's a trike. So yeah, let's just go ahead and jump in. All right, so the electric Eco Delta is based on a Delta trike. That's why it's called a Delta. Um, that's a trike where you have one wheel in the front and two wheels in the back. So that's kind of like the naming uh, convention that they went here with this. Um, but that's about all that's you know kind of normal about this. You do have some normal bicycle parts, but the way that they've integrated it into this very, very simple but also unique frame is is quite cool. And they also have the cost down pretty low. I mean, it's eco for economy, I presume. Uh, and they do that with some of the component selection and also the simplicity of it because more or less I mean the back end has a little bit going on um, with the, the axle for the back wheels but other than that your frame is just a square tube and there you go you have what you would I guess consider a traditional headset compared to a trike uh, coming up here into the stem which extends out into these monstrous uh, long handlebars and that's what gives you your steering capacity uh, so what you, Alec, I'm here with Alec, hey. by the way, from Electric Bike hey Technologies. Guys. how are you? Yeah, so Alec works here in Pennsylvania, uh, helping to build these. Uh, so yeah, as Alec is sitting on here, you can kind of get a sense for the general idea that you pedal like a normal bicycle in the sense that your, your feet kind of come out in front of you. The handlebars are also, I guess, in a conventional location. Uh, there's some other trikes where the handlebars are underneath and you kind of steer like a tank. There's some other ones where the handlebars are in different spots um, where you kind of shift with your hips a little bit. This one, the handlebars are in a regular place from the get-go, but then as you steer, it starts to get very interesting because as you can see, Alec is turning his, his hands over his body like his hands are coming up above his knee. And if he's going slow and making a sharp turn, then he's got to put the handlebars way over, cross over, and kind of let go with his far hand as he makes a, a nice long turn. Uh, generally, you probably won't be doing that when you get up to speed, but if you're maneuvering around, like say in a parade or something like that, then that's a really good opportunity for you to kind of turn the handlebars all the way over. So that's kind of like the, that's like the concept of this vehicle. Very interesting, very unique. I think this would be a really fun, fun ride. I'm really excited to get on and go for a spin uh, because I really love uh, unique rides. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the nuts and bolts on the bike. All right, so up at the front of the bike, you do have some 20 by 1.5 tires. These are kind of like road tires. Uh, these are some Kenda Quests uh, up to a Schrader valve. Uh, this does come into the front uh, motor and we'll kind of get to that in a minute. Uh, you do have a really small fork. So this is a fairly common fork that you would see on some other smaller bicycles. So that's not too specialty quite yet. Uh, coming up into the front brake, which this is a Promax uh, cal cantilever brake or V brake or I guess some people call it a traditional brake, something you might have grown up with. Uh, this is a fairly simple set, and that's fine because a lot of your stopping power for a vehicle like this is in the back of the bike because most of the rider weight is back there and it has a long wheelbase. So yeah, uh, coming up into uh, the headset here, and you do have, I guess, more of a normal stem, as I mentioned before, coming up into where you would normally mount a handlebar. This has got to be like, I don't know, five inches wide or so. Uh, extending all the way up into here. Let's talk about the controls a little bit while we're up because we've already talked about the steering a little bit and how unique that is. Uh, so up here you do have some nice long levers for uh, the brakes and of course this is for the rear brake and this is up here for the front brake. You have a parking brake or like a little lever so where you squeeze it down and then pinch on that little lever there and now the bike is sturdy. There's no kickstand on this bike as you can imagine it's at no risk of tipping over <laughs> but it does have a parking brake so that it won't roll away uh, which is really nice and that's on both sides of it so the front brake is a um, mechanical v-brake on the back well why don't I go ahead and there we go <laughs> on the back uh, you do have a single uh, disc brake in the back. This is a mechanical Promax 300 uh, disc brake that comes into the rotor, which is 160 millimeters, by the way. And that's pretty cool. You know, they they kind of keep the cost down on this by adding just one brake for the rear of the bike. Or, sorry, rear of the trike. Uh, there's some other trikes also available from Electric Bike Technologies that are a little more higher end. They cost a little bit more. They got like two brakes on the back but those are for heavier trikes or something that's meant for a higher speed. Uh, this trike is meant for economy and for kind of easy going cruising. You're, uh, hopefully you're not gonna be going terribly fast 
on a trike like this. So having a single brake is it's fine. I think it works pretty well for this kind of setup. All right, so up on the controls of the bike, you do have this uh, seven speed uh, shifter right here. This is a grip shift that you can use your thumb and your index finger mostly to kind of shift. Uh, it's nice and compact built in here. You don't have a big lever sticking out, which is kind of nice. Uh, this seven speed sun race is going all the way down uh, through the cabling into the plastic uh, derailleur. So I guess that's the most notable thing about this. It's using a 13 to 32 tooth uh, set of gears in the back here and that is again coming into this plastic derailleur i'm not entirely sure as to the longevity of a plastic derailleur uh, i i can tell you with confidence it's not meant to save weight on a bike like this <laughs> it's meant to uh, kind of cut down the cost so that's one of the trade-offs that they do have uh, with this bike uh, but the chain is coming along uh, it's a pretty long chain as you can imagine going through a very large uh, set of space uh, for the trike the chain is covered by this plastic tubing, uh, which is kind of meant to keep your pants or your legs from getting gunked up from the chain because your legs are standing in a position right here, more or less in contact with the chain in a lot of cases, and that could prove to be troublesome. So this is a simple fix, you know, it works. Up here you have the single front chain ring. This is a 38 tooth uh, chain ring covered by uh, two sides on that to also same concept as the plastic tubing to kind of keep your pants or keep your legs from getting gunked up from the chain. And that is on both sides of it. It's not a complete cover. It's still a little bit exposed. Uh, so you can kind of see the inner workings there as it's pedaling, uh, but it does provide a little bit of protection. Uh, that's going into the 170 millimeter uh, cranks that you have on both sides, as well as these plastic pedals. Uh, so these are fully plastic covered. So there is a metal bar in the middle, but the, the railing as well as the, the uh, cover and the bridge is all plastic and of course a reflector right there so again you know plastic pedals aren't particularly my favorite because a good part about electric bicycles in the first place is you don't have to worry about weight so this is again another cost saving measure uh, so yeah we talked about the brakes the shifter and kind of talked about the wheels a little bit uh, let's talk about the frame in a small way so this frame is telescoping which is kind of cool so in a lot of trikes you have what's called a boom up in the front and that's what this is there's a little bit more going on because it has the handlebars and it has the the front wheel as well as a set of gears but you can by loosening up some bolts in the back here you can extend this red part past and telescope it out from the black so that puts your entire front end a little more distant and in that sense it also extends not only the feet but also the handlebars so generally people with longer legs have longer arms as well so that actually matches up. You can extend both of them all the way out. And as another point of customization, you can also change the position of the seat. Uh, so the seat has a quick release here and you can pop that out and you can kind of roll the seat forward or backward, not roll, sorry, like extend the seat forward or backward along this post here of the frame. And that is braced up right here in the back. So the seat has this mesh cover over it, a little bit of padding on the bottom. And on the back of the seat is the brace that comes in and mounts to the back of the frame. So as you extend the whole entire seat forward, this brace again will kind of articulate and kind of allow that to roll forward and let the, on the top part and let the seat go forward or backward uh, a little bit. So those two places that you can kind of customize the position of the bike give you a lot of options, a lot of options for how tall a rider is. And it's not really all that complicated to change up. It's pretty simple. It'll take you a little bit of time. You're certainly not going to do this while you're riding the bike, uh, but it's simple nonetheless. So in the back of the bike in the frame area, you have some pretty good strong spots. The frame uses a single axle going all the way through and it is keyed so that it can accommodate both the set position for the brake rotor as well as for the cassette. So that solid axle is pretty cool, provides a lot of strength along with these bars kind of coming up to add more strength. Again, as we're kind of crossing over into talking about the electric system, uh, this is a 36 volt battery. And that's actually done for two reasons. The first, of course, is cost savings. A 36 volt costs less than a 48. So this is a very approachable bike in that sense. On the other side of that, this is actually a lighter weight battery. And having a lighter weight battery enables for this vehicle to turn a little bit easier and also kind of keep it on the road. Because with a really long wheelbase and with the rider weight a little bit high, and especially with the controls kind of hanging out there, this bike can tip if you're going fast. And I'll get into the road test part and I'll kind of give you an idea as to how fast that is for myself. Uh, but this is definitely a slow going, easy rider kind of bike. And if you have a lot of weight in the back that's at a risk for tipping you over, then they don't want to encourage you to go terribly fast. And I think that it's a good choice 
personally, I, I like the idea of this bike and I would go with the 36 volt myself as well. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the electric system. Uh, kind of already have. <laughs> so this battery is pretty neat in the sense that it is a 36 volt, but for the physical mounting properties, it does have this key. And right now it's in the on position. I'll have Alec go ahead and demonstrate that. He's got two hands. Uh, so you kind of undo the key there and that will turn off the trike as well as allow you to pull it out. When you put the key in, you kind of have to push it in a tiny bit to get to the last position. There you go, you pull it out, unplug that little guy, and then you're ready to rock. And the battery uh, comes off really slick. It's nice and metal protected, so I like that a lot. I really do. You can, if you want, opt for a smaller battery that is in a bag. Uh, and when the battery is in a bag, the smaller one, that will save you some money. Uh, I think it's a, what is it, almost 300 bucks savings or so? Yeah, I think it's $280 less for the nine amp hour bag mm -hmm. battery. Um, and we've got all of those prices listed at electrictrike.com where you can customize uh, the capacity of the battery for a 9, a 10, or a 20 amp hour battery and see a comparison of what sort of range you get um, out of each battery because the larger the battery, the farther you can go on the motor power. One important note is that this bike is using the metal case. That's the 36 volt 10 amp hour. That one comes in the metal case. The other two come in a bag. Uh, both the really big one and the small one for cost saving. So so let's go ahead and dive back into the electric system. Uh, so right above the battery, you'll see that this is the air-cooled controller from a sister company, eBike Kit, also run under the same roof with electrictrike.com. And you can customize this controller if you needed to, is that right? Yeah, so um, our entire system, which we've been offering since uh, 2008, and we update it every couple of years, uh, this is a very modern system that, for instance, is dual voltage compatible. So even though we offer this trike at 36 volt, it's the same controller, same LCD that we use on 48 volt systems. So it's capable of doing a lot of different stuff. And the way this is mounted on this bike, this whole system is accessible. You can get at the cables and the throttle and the controller in case you want to uh, change any parts or service anything. This is all mounted where you can access it. Great. So yeah, as he was talking about, the the, con the configuration is pretty easy because you have these nice, easy, waterproof connectors where you can find them and get to them. So as long as you can see it, I mean, it's pretty easy to get to. There's a lot of things here uh, that you can change up. But non nonetheless, it is kind of tucked away. It's in the back of the bike where it's not going to interrupt the aesthetic too much. And the cabling, of course, runs underneath the bike, uh, coming all the way up to the controls. Uh, so let's talk about the display a little bit. Uh, Alec, why don't you go ahead and jump on and kind of start up the display. Yeah, absolutely. So the display is pretty clear. Oh, brand new. Peeled off the plastic. <laughs> so the display is quite clear. It shows you everything that you need on this kind of monochrome sort of uh, motif with the ruler uh, kind of looking thing for the battery level. So your battery level is right here on these little notches and as you consume the battery, these notches will tick down in small segments and that's always present. Uh, the miles per hour of how fast you're going is right there in the middle and you have uh, your pedal assist level and Alec is using the remote attachment right here to change the pedal assist level. This also sets the cap for the throttle and that cap is a pretty comfortable one. It's not like a harsh wall where it cuts off at 10 miles an hour and that's where it is but it goes up in incremental stages and it changes not only the limit but also the curve which is pretty cool. Down here at the very bottom, you have the variable display. Uh, right here, it shows the odometer, but Alec is gonna press the mode button and that will cycle through a handful of metrics like the trip set, second trip set, max speed, average speed. And if you'd like, you can actually do some further customization by pressing the up and down arrows on the remote attachment Hold them for a couple of seconds and that will get you into a variety of pages. Yeah, one of the coolest things about our systems that we put on all of our trikes is that you can access things like the top speed limit here. So say that you don't want to go the full 20 miles per hour that this trike is capable of, but you want to go to a lower top speed, you can easily turn it down so that it won't allow the motor to ever go faster. Uh, you can also access things like uh, flipping through here if you want to hook up a different battery. You can access the current limit. So if we wanted to, instead of running this um, as a 500 to 700 watt motor, we could turn the current limit down 
to make it uh, like a 350 watt motor if we wanted less power. And we can also control how sensitive the pedal assist sensor is in case uh, we want to scale the pedal assist for slower pedaling or faster pedaling in order to customize how much power output we get from the motor. And the idea behind all this is we like people to be comfortable on their electric bike. You don't have to go full speed all the time. Uh, you know, this is like a cruiser bike. This is a very relaxed trike. It's comfortable and approachable. And uh, if you want to take it easy and glide down the boardwalk, you can turn your speed down in a whole bunch of different ways in order to do that. Before we get back into the lower parts of the electric system, uh, I should mention that there is an electric cutoff switch uh, located and housed inside of the mount here for the brake handle. So when you squeeze on the brake handle, uh, that actually engages a small switch that's housed inside of here to cut off power to the motor system. So what that effectively does as you're riding is when you squeeze on the brakes, the motor system will not engage. Even if you're pedaling with the pedal assist on or even if you're throttling, it won't let power get through. So that way you're never fighting against it. That's a pretty cool safety feature, one that I believe is quite necessary for bikes with the throttle on them at all. So continuing down uh, the electric system, there is a cadence-based pedal assist system uh, that is built right into the bottom bracket area here. So you have eight magnets on this little disc which pass, pass over a counter uh, that is uh, stationary mounted under here. So that's how it knows that you want assistance. Alec is going backwards at the time, but the idea is that these little bright magnets will pass over it. When you're pedaling forward, that's how the bike knows that you want assistance, and that's how it engages the assistance, you know, that's how it gets input from you. And when you pedal, that's what propels the bike forward electrically and mechanically at the same time. And that is done so through the motor mounted up in the front. Uh, so as Alec was saying before, this 500 watt motor is capable for both 36 volt and 48, and you can adjust the current level um, on the display. So as it comes from the factory, it's meant set for like a 20 current or 20 amp limit on the current and that effectively gets you 720 watts coming through this. Uh, but this motor is capable of a little bit more if you wanted to beef it up a little bit. And you can totally do that because there are two torque arms mounted on here. Uh, one on the left and one on the right side. So you can get a fair amount of power on this thing and still feel comfortable on it. As far as comfort for riding on this shape and proportion of a vehicle, that's entirely up to your skill level. So yeah, I'm excited to go and take it for a ride because this is very, very unique. So let's go ahead and jump on. So you can kind of see a little bit that I should probably extend the boom or put the seat back because my legs aren't getting a full extension on this. But nonetheless, I mean, I'm really gonna throttle on this thing a lot. I think it's really fun. So let's go ahead. The pedal assist is really fun. It, uh, it kicks in pretty good because you can put it into a lower gear. It doesn't have a whole high gear range. Because I start spinning out at about 11 miles an hour or so. And that's when the throttle takes over. <laughs> All right guys, so here we are on the electric Eco Delta. I've got you pointed up at the pedals up front as well as the motor up front. So let's go ahead and take it for a spin and show you what it does.
So that's pretty fun. You probably saw me sticking my leg up a little bit as we were making a tight turn. If you're going faster than say, I don't know, like 12 miles an hour or so, you probably want to be pretty careful. If you are okay, you know, comfortable balancing your weight out, kind of sticking your leg as you saw me do, then you can do some pretty fun stuff on this trike. <laughs> okay, so I've had a lot of fun here on the electric Eco Delta. You probably saw that at one point during the ride test, I was kind of wiggling around a little bit. I was doing that intentionally. Uh, I was trying to find the threshold of speed where it would start to tip a little bit. And of course, it's gonna vary a little bit depending on your size and speed and things, but I was going about 12 miles an hour or so and taking those tight turns, trying to get it to uh, kind of find that braking point. So yeah, I would definitely call this a low speed vehicle. I think that a 48 volt wouldn't be necessary for me. I think 36 is a good choice here. And hey, keeps costs down. So yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. If you want to see the full write up and review and specifications and measurements for this bike, you can go to electricbikereview.com where you can compare this with a whole lot of other different electric trikes from the guys over at electrictrike.com, electric bike technologies uh, like Alec here. You can also compare it to all sorts of different electric bikes and trikes that you find on our site. You can also go there to participate in the forums if you'd like to ask a question or hang out with the community and engage with us that way. So thanks for watching guys, ride safe.